Hi, and welcome to the next episode of ERC's Eye of the Expert. And something we're going to talk about this week is something that has actually been really prominent during the coronavirus and the COVID-19 and various lockdowns around the world. And that is the comparison between sim racing and real life. Uh, we know a lot of race drivers have virtually turned into professional sim racers during it. It's a little bit harder for rallying. There has been a few rally championships uh, during sim racing, uh, but not maybe as much as a circuit racing. But is it a real tool? Is it something that can be used and beneficial to rally drivers when they get onto stages? It's something that we know a lot of the drivers play on. Uh, but there is one stage in particular, in Barham Czech Rally Zlin, the Simakin stage, is a stage that has been run for quite a few years, but is now on a game. And there is a certain driver who we know in the European Rally Championship who last year went quickest on both runs through the Simakin stage, and then at the end of the stage actually made reference to, it's just like the game. That would be an interesting one to compare. That's what we're basically going to do. We're going to speak to Nikolai Gryazin, and Nikolai's joining us on the other end of the call. Hi, Nikolai. How are you doing? What are you up to? Hi, I'm fine. And you? Yeah, I'm really good. Can't wait to go rallying again, like I think a lot of people. But uh, what have you been uh, up to since basically Mexico? Uh, Mexico? Yeah, it was quite an uh, interesting journey for us. It's my first time flying uh, CSI, so... It was a nice trip and also it was a big journey to come back home because everything was cancelled and uh, it was difficult to fly to Russia again. <laughs> and in the, the, the lockdown situation, uh, have you been able to do anything? Have you been stuck in Russia, Latvia? What, what have you been doing? Yeah, I'm stuck in Russia and uh, once I was able to drive on Hyundai in Estonia. So... Well, I think like two days of testing I did. So now just more of the time playing simulators. That's all what I'm doing. And also some exercises with the body, but most of the time it's simulators. Well, that's why we've got you on. We're going to talk to you about sim racing, uh, well, sim rallying as it is in this case. And the, the stage that we're going to talk about, we'll bring the video up soon, but what is it like we know when when you see these circuits, the circuit is virtually identical to the game, to the racetrack. But what is it like for, for rallying? Is it comparable or is it a, a little bit kind of different? Yeah, at some places are, it's really, most of the time it's different because it's uh, really difficult to represent the whole stage because it will cost um, some money and a lot of time because you need to represent any damages on the roads any bumps and uh, entertainment i mean like everything so um, really it's difficult to find the proper stage which will be like identical so semitin one of the stages which is in rich and burns rally are completely the same that's why i was i was driving there and uh, trying to learn the stage but most of the stages are not so similar but i think i think you can find 10 10 stages uh, in this simulator which will be representative because also you can find a lot of um, uh, realistic stages in in the game like wrc8 yeah but um, from my side it's not easy it's not uh, so simulate like simulator it's more like arcade game but uh, in my uh, vision, I play the games, which is representative also of the driving skills. That's why I use for this case uh, Rich and Burns Rally and not other rallies like uh, Dirt 2.0 or uh, WRC game. Because, uh, yeah, they have a really nice uh, footage, nice uh, graphics, and also the stages are representative more. But um, I want to feel the car, feel the right feedback, the right behavior of the car. That's why I'm used on the Richard Burns Rally because this game looks not so realistic. It's from 2004 year, but I can use Hyundai i20 R5 and Hyundai i20 WRC. I can use any car from uh, even uh, Group B. So you can try anything you want. Well, let's have a look at it. Last year from part of the, the European Rally Championship, you were in your Skoda Fabia from Sports Racing Technologies. That is on the left-hand side of our screen. You've redone the game in your Hyundai i20. Talk me through the similarities between real life and game life. 
Yeah, it was really like this because, but now it's not in the same place you are watching. But uh, yeah, it was really helpful for me because you can see I use uh, Oculus VR, so I, I can see the road like in, in from the car. And uh, some of these places like big jumps, you can uh, even remember in which direction you need to jump. So also some dirty places because in uh, Barum there's a lot of cuts. And for example, if you take a look on the left screen, it was left small uh, slow corner. Now it's on the game left corner is also dirty and you know you can go wider. And after you know some places where you can uh, just cross the grass and jump into also this place on the game, you can see right really fast, but you need to be calm because there's a big bump and you can just go off. Also like this corners you can wait wait here you can cut in in real life some places was different because you cannot cut or you can even more cut because now on the left screen you see uh, it's not possible to cut a lot but on the right screen when we come to this place you will see i just jump through the corner like this <laughs> you can see i just cut here and after cut on the right corner and here's the place where you need to be calm because it's so bumpy and you need to break because if you are lost you will go to the streets and after this jump next jump on the right screen also you need to be calm because on the full throttle it's possible but after on the right corner it could be a problem you can go on two wheels and other things also this left corner which is really um, scary because you don't see the corner and it's like a little bit light cars going gain on also here we go down downhill it's the most tricky part which even in the game and in real life you need to not to push because it's dirty you have cuts and uh, it's really difficult to break normally but um, i think uh, in real life when i drove this part which you can see on left it was helpful for me to remember it in the game because it's really scary to do it in the first uh, passes but when you know when we, where's the trickiest uh, moments you can go faster and faster so here on, you can see on the left screen we are going on a white road on the right side we will come later but also it's very dirty like on the video you can take a look here now we go on the right uh, screen and you see left corner also have some dirty and it, it representative because it's difficult to break also okay now this corner on if you see on the right screen it's uh, most of the full throttle uh, part here little lift but after i go full throttle in real life uh, i don't remember i think i was a little bit broke uh, break because there was anti-cuts signs after okay, you can yeah. go here you can go on the right like i do it in in real life but you can go like 2010 20, years uh, straight without this um, uh, corners also here's a really tricky moment on the left screen you saw a little jump also on the right one you will see it's left corner you need to be calm because there's the curves and also big jump but okay, in the, real, in the game I was pushing more, but now it's game, uh, will be a part which is really tricky and I was remember from the game because now on the right you see it goes with little cuts, you need to to try to do it on the, on the full throttle after this right corner which is really slippery in, in real life and this big bump because in, real, in the game it's quite heavy, but in real you can go with also with a full throttle after this part going full throttle, in real life it's full throttle, but in the game it's not representative of the left corner which you will see in the game so it's uh, you need to break a little and cut a lot but uh, other part is was quite similar on left on the left screen you see the left corner which is was this big slide in real in in the game you can see it's also a dirty place and you need to be calm because if you go early on the throttle you will have a big slide after it's full throttle on downhill first right corner should be a little bit pushing but after you need to break quite hard on the left corner and you can see on the left screen right corner it's not dirty it's you have anti-cuts but in the game it's quite a big uh, cut so you can use it for not for the good grip but for the camber and also now in the game you see left corner which is also very dirty when i drove in uh, peugeot r2 this ra this stage but in opposite direction it was so slippery in this place so they represented also this corner after the after here goes quite difficult place for pace nose because there is no straight it's every time corner corner and after immediately some tight on corner you need to see 
and remember when you need to to go in a more slower corner also here now on the left screen you see the place where Lucas Kabai has little crash so now on the game you break quite hard but the corner is quite fast so after you need to I don't remember on the, on the screen on the right so yeah it's full full and after yeah it's a bridge bridge a place which is also with the sand and it's difficult you need to be so precise otherwise it also depends on the setup of the car you can go understeer or oversteer but i prefer understeer on such stages because otherwise you need to work with the wheel a lot so here go full throttle moment and uh, you go in some slow, slow uh, left corner which very dirty but in real life it was not so dirty like in the game and after it's the last section which is the most enjoyable when you go near the houses right with a little cut you go a little bit outside it's possible but not play a lot and in the game you can go the flat out left and right corner but I was a little bit breaking to make it like in real life because in real life it's uh, quite scary to go in the left and right corner with the full throttle because otherwise you will hit uh, the red flag which means finish so yeah now we don't have any targets with the standing so just uh, just why we enjoying and these stages incredible uh, i think the onboard should be really fun because i don't even do it in the games <laughs> because you know the stage you can play in some simulators but uh, difficult really difficult and big jumps and uh, but in, uh, in the middle section it will be faster i think yeah but other uh, tricky places so Nikolai, you've explained about all that kind of stuff. I, I've got a question is, how much does it help with racecraft, so to speak, compared to the game and then real life? Uh, sometimes it helps a lot because, for example, uh, in the game, you can uh, try as much as possible to set up changes and you can try to see what is really helpful. You can try this and this, something not so good, something like the brilliant, and you will write it down to the paper okay maybe i can try it in real life and after when you try in real life you can notice that it's really so close that's why i love this game even this game uh because it represents also very good uh, all setup changes sometimes it also I, I know something from other drivers which say hmm, maybe this one works okay we try it on the test i tried in the game you say yeah it's also good so sometimes it's very very close sometimes it could be not the same but it's never going in opposite sometimes for example if i if i open the real wheels i will not have understeer so it's 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 normal so uh, it works like this and uh, for me it's really helpful to more analyze the car what kind of changes would you have made on a game and then into real life be it right heights or uh, dampers or clicks what kind of things would you say it's you could change it, it, it's a lot because you can try to play with all dampers changes it's fast rebound slow rebound fast bump slow bump also you have the difference the speed difference when working bump or fast bump so it's like it's it seems like it's a shimp set of the whole uh, damper that's why you can choose and change so much so it's sometimes really difficult to find the good solution for for uh, suspension for damper because there's millions of uh, change, changes you can do it's not like three five clicks you can you can play with all graphics that's why it's sometimes not easy also your anti-roll bars the right height of the car of the car car balance uh, with the with the weight is no car balance there's okay you can play with the height um in in some uh, ca cars you can try to make even uh, aerodynamics but it's uh, only in some cars which from wrc so uh what exactly ah yeah so ge ge geometry you can play with the toy camber and it also counts you can see which uh tire pressure you have on the end of the stage and which uh part of the tire is more uh, hot so it's, it's quite it's not easy like in a, in a um, games like circuit racing it's uh which is recent uh, games they have everything on a, on the screen but in the this game is, game is quite um, old, that's why I need two additional programs to see all of these like, telemetry things. But most of the time you just 
try to to change the sprints, dumpers, I think, and everything, and just feel okay. The car more easy to turn, car is more following, the car is not is nervous and other stuff. A lot of drivers now concentrate on watching like their recce videos and things like that. You play the game. How many times did you play the game before going to Barham <coughs> to get that experience? Uh, I cannot say how much hours I, I made it, but uh, I think uh, this stage I drove maybe 30 times because you can drive in some championships this stage. So you want or you don't want, but you will start to remember. But yeah, I just noticed this stage once when I just uh, see some videos from this game and I, I just remember, oh, this corner I go full throttle, but it was not full throttle and it was near the crash and after on the Peugeot it was. And I, I thought, I think I was drove this stage and because I remember it's so representative and I say, yeah, this is this corner I remember, this house, absolutely the same. And after I just go on an EWRC and just look what, the, what was the stage. And okay, Semitin, yeah, I drove this. And after I start to analyze, so is it really representative? And after I download these games, starts to work and play and after I understood that it's really helpful but i i wasn't uh, think it will help me because it was really fun to to drive just but after when you go on the stage you just understand when you are pushing you you know you are listening to the co-driver but you know what exactly the corner will be so you are not trying to to think is it six corner or maybe six minus or maybe not full throttle you just know if i go full throttle okay here's some free space uh, it's safe that was going to be a question it was, i know people like hayden padden i've been told by his co-driver john kennard he watches the recce video so much he really the, the pace notes are then just a guide for him because he has this memory, this photo memory. Gus Greensmith has a photographic memory as well. Is Yaroslav's pace notes then just a reminder of where you are, or are you still 100% re listening to what is happening, or are you remembering from the game? No, uh, anyway, in the rally, I just listen to the co driver because it's not the, absolutely the same. It could be a little bit uh, another angle of the corner, it could be anti cut or cut, but some places like i i remember okay here will be i i hear like left full throttle over the jump i know exactly what will be after it's not helped me like uh when i need to go because uh, i listen just the co driver just in which direction i go but in my mind i'm more calm because i know what exactly will be after so oh, but I, anyway if, if co driver will tell me something wrong i will lift the i will like lift off the pedal so that's why it's also important yeah i was maybe less listening to the co-driver but i cannot drive without co-driver it's like i was not so concentrate on his uh, corners i was more relaxing because i remember the corners and it was like more uh, some advices but it's really important because it's for sure it's not the same in the game with the anti-cuts moments and some places are not dirt like in real or opposite when i look through the stage times uh it was 11.55 k's long is the stage the first pass in 2019 you were 3.9 seconds quicker than luckenuk and a massive 8.1 over the czech superstar jan kopecki the second pass you were four seconds quicker than kopecki and six and a half over luckenuk that that's a big margin in, in any rallying isn't it and and that your recce videos your game practice in that stage did make a difference yeah i did i, I can't say like recce videos are helping me a lot i just look at it when i need to check if uh, pace notes are good and uh, the stack of the pace notes because sometimes i can tell right six and uh, it could be a really short one but i will not tell it to co-drivers that it's short because otherwise it's too much information so that's why sometimes we are looking in after Reiki, Reiki videos to to write where I need a lot of information, where I need just to make some pause. So it's difficult to say like Reiki videos are helping to go faster. Some places where it's so difficult, you need to remember, I just cut the video and um, upload it to my phone. That's why I can before stage just look at the places and see, okay, these places are difficult. So I, I remember it, I know how to do it and 
after I go. But to remember all stage by videos, it's for me it's boring. I just start to sleep because it's even when I look some onboards, which is even faster. But uh, I feel like I'm going sleep. But if I see onboard from the stage which I drove, for example. I can look until the end, but when I because I'm I'm trying to compare. But if you are looking the video, which is like new for you, you don't know the stage. You start just to feel the sleep. Uh, the same like I uh, watching uh, Formula One. It's it's not possible for me to watch it until the end. So um, yeah, it's like like it's happened. And um, as I know, also looking you can. Uh, he was playing this game, so he also knows this stage quite good. He didn't tell me it in real life, but I I think uh, in 2017 or 2018 he was pushing like hell on the stage, and uh, I think it was the same because he was playing this game. But he never told me it's directly if it do, did it or not. But uh, if he also played this game. I think maybe he tried it or tried to remember because uh, yeah, uh, looking at me and Kopetsky because Kopetsky was quite uh, he okay he did this rally quite a lot of times so it's uh, he have some good uh, advantage but anyway I did it like 30 times <laughs> like I can say on this stage Nikolai it's been a great insight finding out the difference between real racing and, and sim racing thanks for taking the time to talk to us and hope to see you soon yeah thank you hope to see you thank you very much bye bye See you.